Thank you, Andreas, for the introduction. Thank you, Professor Adele, for the invitation, too. So I'm going to talk about Open LataJet step by step. But when we are talking about uh, LataJet procedure, we are uh, to keep in mind uh, that we are dealing uh, in my practice with collision athletes. But what are collision sports? They are defined as those during which routine, powers, full body-to-body -body collision occurs as a legal and expected part of the game. So they have repeated injuries, high energy impact forces, multiple complex pathologies, and in some cases, bipolar bone lesions. So when we have this type of patients, we have to uh, see some patient factors, age, the sport position where they play, and we have to perform a good exam and take some imaging, but good quality imaging, to see how the glenoid bone stock uh, we have, how the humeral bone is, and what, uh, in, in what condition are our soft tissue. When we're talking about soft tissue, we have some procedures like arthroscopic bank card, open bank card repair, Hagar repair, capsular shift, and reemplissage. And with the bone procedure, we have the latter jet, the Bristol, the J-graft, and the distal tibia allograft. What is the ideal collision shoulder stabilization? It must be able to withstand supraphysiological loads, lower dislocation rate than normal shoulder, predictable time to return to play, and range of motion is more important than compensis. If we increase the stability, maybe we increase the complications. We have in one side arthroscopic bunker reconstruction, in the middle open bunker repair, and the, in the other part of the procedures, we have the lethargic procedure. Lethargic procedure is not new, it's an old technique described in the middle of the last century by Dr. Latarget in Lyon, France. And what are the characteristics of this uh, procedure? It's rational, triple blocking effect. We have the bony effect. Coracoid is positioned at the anterior rim of the glenoid, enlarging the glenoid surface. The tendon block works like a sling. The co-joint tendon reforces the anterior and inferior shoulder capsule in abduction and extra rotation, and the capsular block suturing of the remaining capsule of the coracoacromial ligament of the bone block. So open letter jet step by step. The positioning is very important to perform a good letter jet procedure. We usually do it by general anesthesia in a interscalene block, beach chair position, and we usually fold it sheet under the shoulder to expose the anterior part of the shoulder uh, better than if we don't use it. Uh, in some cases, we use tranexamic acid, and it's a, this is a good uh, publication that says that in that study, significantly reduced the operative uh, blood loss, painful, and post-operative swelling and hematomas, and less painkillers after the use of it. The skin incision, five to six centimeter incision, start at the coracoid tip, develop the delta peltoral interval, retract the cephalic vein laterally. As you can see, I recommend to lower than the tip of the coracoid uh, to have a better exposure. The surgical exposure, arm in abduction and extra rotation. The homo retractor is put it in the top of the coracoid, as you can see in the picture. After that, you have a, a good vision of the, of the coracoid process. Prepare the coracoid. You have to deattach the pec minor, and after that, you will cut with os oscillation saw, remove the remaining soft tissue, take out of the homan, and prepare, take the cortex that will be in contact with the glenoid side of the of that surface uh, and prepare it with some care. After that, uh, we have to expose 
the glenoid. We have to perform an horizontal split to take, uh, in this part of the surgery, you have to take care of the innervation. You have to protect them. And uh, we usually use uh, the two-thirds and the one-third uh, horizontal split. You can see it, the horizontal split. After that, you will see the capsule. And you have to create a U-shaped labral incision. Use a roger to remove the bony bone cart and prepare the glenoid with a bore. You can see it. After that, you will place the coracoid process. Place the coracoid flush with the articular surface of the glenoid. Slight medial placement is acceptable, but lateral placement is unacceptable. So you have to, to see uh, your surface uh, very good to see where you are going to put the coracoid process. As you can see, you have to measure, and after that you will do the holes in the coracoid process, and after that you will put the screws, and they are, have to engage the posterior cortex, and sequentially tighten the top and the bottom at the same time. After that, you will close the capsule, and you have the x-rays after the procedure. The rehabilitation, yeah, we usually have uh, take some x-rays in the, in the room of the patient. The mobilizer is for two weeks, hand, wrist, and elbow motion exercises. They continue the ceiling after two weeks. Mobilization and stretching exercises, and usually return to sport after six months. And we usually uh, take some Bernago views. Uh, what is Bernago views? Uh, they have some indication, recurrent anterior instability, posterior instability, and post-operative assessment following coracoid transfer, as you can see. You can see the... the lateral procedure and its place. It's a case. The complications, intraoperative fracture of the coracoid process, no union, glenomeral osteoarthritis, loss of external rotation, subscapularis fatty infiltration, and neurological injuries. Contraindication and complications of the lateral jet procedure, they are very safe if you do it step by step and take care of the procedure. Arthroscopic versus open lateral jet, in this study, uh, 10 arthroscopic lateral procedures were needed to overcome the need for conversion and 20 procedures to achieve equal operating time to open technique. The results were similar, but in the arthroscopic technique, there are more uh, complications like screw placement is inaccuracy, persistent apprehension, and recurrence uh, still remain higher with this technique. Clinical resource and cost analysis, obviously, the Arthroscopic uh, lethargic, it uh, will be more expensive. So, the summary, despite advances in surgical techniques and devices over the last 20 years, open or arthroscopic surgical treatment of anterior shoulder dislocation produces similar clinical results. The recurrence rate for arthroscopic surgical stabilization has only marginally decreased from 16.8% to 14.2%. Both procedures are safe. However, the arthroscopic route presents a greater amount of malpositioning of the fixation material. Thank you.